Team USA, national women's team, back-to-back World Cup titles. They're amazing. I can't say enough positive things about them. But, (laughs) and there's always a but, isn't there? But. We just found ourselves out of the World Cup. And unfortunately, it's very early in the competition. Disappointing. We just lost in the round of 16, whereas we are used to going to the championship and winning. All right. So for us to not even make the quarterfinal is a big disappointment. We lost to Sweden in penalties. And our most famous player, maybe not our best player, as she's a bit older now, uh, she missed the penalty kick at the end. And that is why we lost. And frankly, throughout the entire World Cup tournament, in the group stage where we played Portugal and the Netherlands and Vietnam, we never looked good. They never actually looked good. They never actually uh, played up to their potential in any of the four games in the group stage or the or the knockout stage. And frankly, as many people pointed out, we barely made it out of the group stage. There was a there was a post, you know, the goal post that uh, one of the analysts said that was the actual player of the game. And what do we mean by that? Uh, basically, the the Portuguese team. When uh, when we we drew with them, we tied zero zero with Portugal. Um, they had a breakaway at the very end of the game. I believe we were already in extra time, and they had a good shot at the goal, and they just missed, and it hit the goal post. If that ball had been six inches to the left, it would have gone in because they hit the right goal post. All right, the player of the game that. was the goal post. I know. What and, was the chances of that? Right of of every spot available for you to get that ball in what are the chances of being that precise against that post exactly exactly so they actually barely made it to the next round to the the knockout stage and when they got there sweden ain't no joke they're the they were ranked the number three team in the world we were ranked number one but we never played like the number one team in the world and sweden took it and they had a chance to put it away but they didn't, and so it ended up going to extra time. And on, and on top of that, the Americans, we, we didn't get a chance to really watch this team because they didn't have any uh, primetime games. A lot of their games were at 2 in the morning or 5 in the morning or midnight uh, for a lot of Americans. But if they had won their group instead of coming in second, and the, the way this works is the, the top two teams out of a group of four move on to the knockout stage. If we had won the group instead of coming in second, we would have had a game that was at 7 p.m. Pacific time, 10 p.m. Eastern time last night. But instead, they played at 2 a.m. Pacific time and 5 a.m. Eastern time. So a bunch of Americans woke up to find out that we lost or stayed up and now are are a bit angry that they stayed up for that. You think anything else contributed? Ex- and you think there were any external factors that contributed to the loss? That's a really good question. I know some people will probably blame pressure because they were going for a three-peat. They won the last two Women's World Cups. However, I believe there was more pressure on them in the last World Cup because that was also in the middle of them kneeling for the national anthem and also in the middle of the entire uh, struggle for equal pay uh, to change up the way their uh, their their contract with with Team USA or with the U.S. national team worked out because they get a fraction of what the men were getting and the pay structure was a bit different different. So I think they made it fairer and and all the women seem to seem to at least be excited about the new contract that they got. It's still not exactly the same because again, you know, the men's World Cup brings in like more than ten times more money than the women's World Cup. Yes, the women's World Cup is a big deal to us here because we win it, right? Um, but it doesn't make as much money as the men's world cup. The, the men's world cup is, is, you know, a, a, a global crazy event with people, you know, coming out in, in literally the hundreds of thousands to, to watch, uh, in, in public spaces and whatnot. 
Right. So men's soccer, right. I feel like, is more a global phenomenon. Yeah. And this is a global phenomenon as well, but like, it's just, it just doesn't have as many eyeballs on it. And eventually it'll, it'll get there. You know, I believe it's growing right. every year, but uh, right. yeah, and I think women, there was we more... need to hold that down more. I mean, you know, for, mm-hmm. for all our demand for having sports, 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 I feel like women, we don't support it enough. I mean, a lot of our women's leagues are supported by the funding from the male leagues. Yo, that's a good point because there's enough women in a lot of the major cities that have WNBA games to sell out those WNBA games. The tickets aren't expensive. No, they're really not. And I'm yeah. guilty of it too. I'm guilty of it too. Yeah. Um, so I need to be more diligent. So, but that yeah. is something I think as women, we need to be more diligent economically. Like I'm done, I'm done marching and I'm done hitting parades. I'm going to now focus on economics, which I think is what we should be doing as a collective species. Mm. I hear, I heard that. <laughs> I definitely heard that. Cause yeah, we've, we've been marching and protesting. I mean, you and I were out there at, at Occupy you know, with, you know, getting tear gas back then we we've shown up to everything we were. And before I even knew you, I'm sure you were out there protesting the Iraq war and whatnot. Right. Like it's ridiculous. You know, like, I, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, I'm done. That's why I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going out in parades and marching anymore. First of all, I don't need to deal with no active shooter situation. And second of all, it doesn't move the needle. What moves the needle is power and money. So that's yeah. where we need to concentrate our strategies and yep. our thinking and our yep. focus. I told you about that sign I saw at the very first women's march um, right after Trump got elected. Uh, mm-hmm. This this you know elderly hippie, she's in a wheelchair and she's holding up a sign. Uh, I'll I'll never forget. It said, "I can't believe I still have to protest this shit." Yeah, I mean, no truer words have been said right now. I mean, I thought we had a war that decided some of this shit, and then like, and apparently, like, we're still trying to figure out what words mean, and it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.